Hi, this is Sir Jet. Today I am here in Santa Cruz Laguna. Behind me is the tallest Rizal statue in the world. It stands 26 feet tall. It is taller by 4 feet than the one in Calamba City. This statue was unveiled during the 2014 Palarong Pangbansa held here in Rizal's home province. This statue is very unique because it depicts Rizal as a fencer. And do you know that aside from fencing, Rizal was also an expert in many other sports like chess, judo, boxing, shooting, swimming, and gymnastics. And aside from these sports, Rizal also had other skills and talents. That's what we will find out in today's episode of The Rizal Lectures. We can say that Rizal is a genius not only because of his intellect, but also because of his skill set. He is such a gifted man. He has so many skills and talents. Most Rizal classes focus on him being a writer and a doctor. But today you will learn that he has at least 16 other faces. He is multifaceted. He excelled in so many fields, not just one. Let's begin with him being a land surveyor. He was a legit land surveyor. He graduated from a land surveying vocational course from Ateneo just before he enrolled in UST. And he was able to apply this skill when he bought a land in Dapitan. Remember that he was exiled by the Spaniards to Dapitan, a very remote place in the island of Mindanao. And upon arriving there, he bought a lotto ticket and he won first prize. Actually, three people shared the first prize because they had the same number. The two other people were Rizal's military escort and an unknown citizen. As for Rizal, he used his lotto money to buy a vast land in the Pitan. And that's where he put up his school and clinic. And he also planted several agricultural crops in that land. We call that land the Talisay Estate. And that's where Rizal practiced his land surveying skills. Rizal is also an architect of some sort. In the Talisay estate, Rizal designed and constructed three nipa huts or bahay kubos. One is rectangular, which is the traditional bahay kubo that everybody knows of. But the two other bahay kubos were very unique. One was six-sided and the other was eight-sided. The six-sided and the eight-sided bahay kubos were one of a kind during those times. And that is exactly the job of architects. Architects make original designs of houses and buildings. In the picture is a replica of the six-sided Bahay Kubo that Rizal built in the Pitan. We can find this standing in the Rizal Shrine in the Pitan. This is also the inspiration for the logo of the Yuchenko group of companies. You can find this logo in the RCBC banks. The first letter in RCBC, R, stands for Rizal. And this is also the logo of Malayan Insurance, which got its name from Rizal, the great Malayan. RCBC and Malayan Insurance both belong to the Yuchenko group of companies. Rizal was also a civil engineer of some sort. Although he didn't earn a formal degree in civil engineering, he was able to build a dam in the Pitan. And this dam is still operational up to today. This is the picture of the dam that Rizal built in the Talisay estate. It's difficult to build a dam because the water from the river continuously flow. And how can you make the concrete dry up if the water is continuously flowing? You must have great knowledge in civil engineering for you to come up with this kind of feat. Rizal was also a big time farmer. When he was in the Pitan, he planted fruit trees and other crops in his Talisay estate. We know this from his letters sent to his friends and relatives. Rizal mentioned that he raised chickens, ducks, rabbits, and pigs in the Pitan. And he also had 50 lanzones trees, 20 mango trees, 50 langka trees, 18 mangosteen trees, 200 cacao trees, more than 1,000 coffee plants, 
He also had pineapples, 16 coconut trees, some macopa, santol, guava, atis, durian, and balanos trees. And you can just imagine how big Rizal's land was in the Pitan. He also mentioned that a section of his land was planted with 6,000 abaca plants and corn that can produce two cavans every harvest time. From his letters, we know that Rizal was an excellent farmer because he mentioned that his harvests were of high quality and great quantity compared to the other farms around in the area. He must have learned his farming skills from his family in Kalamba. Remember that his brother Pashano was the manager of their vast farms in Kalamba and also because of Rizal's observations on how agriculture was done in Europe. So he was able to apply all this when he became a farmer himself in the Pitan. Rizal was also a businessman. Firstly, because he sold the harvest from his Talisay estate in the public market of the Pitan. And aside from fruits and vegetables, Rizal also sold socks and stockings in the Dapitan public market. In one of his letters addressed to his sister, Rizal asked his sister to bring along lots and lots of socks and stockings from Manila because he will sell those in Dapitan. Rizal got the idea of selling socks and stockings because the parish priest in the Pitan ordered that women should come to Mass wearing shoes with stockings or socks. The father doesn't want to see uncovered skin of the legs of the ladies in the church. Rizal had an entrepreneuring mind and he saw this as an opportunity to make money because surely the women of the Pitan would be looking for socks and stockings. Rizal also mentioned in his letters that he was against the monopoly of Chinese businesses in the Pitan. He doesn't want foreigners to control the economy in the Pitan. So he plunged himself into the scene, hoping that Filipino businessmen would benefit the most, at least in the Dapitan economy. We also know that when Rizal was in Europe, he showed flashes of him being an entrepreneur by bringing bottles of wines in parties. And instead of sharing those drinks for free to the Filipinos in the party, he would ask them to pay for these drinks. He's really a very smart businessman. Rizal was also a biologist. When he was in the Pitan, he discovered three species of animals, a bug, a lizard, and a frog. And these animals were named after him. They bear scientific names that have Rizali in them. Rizal placed specimens of these animals in bottles with formalin and sent them to Europe for verification, specifically to Germany. Germany was the center of science and technology during that time. And when the German scientists saw these animals in the jars, they confirmed that indeed Rizal was the first one to discover these animals. These are the Draco Rizali, a winged lizard, the Racophorus Rizali, a frog, and the Apagonia Rizali, a beetle. These are the pictures of those animals bearing Rizal's name. Aside from these three species, Rizal also preserved other plants and animals. He put them in frames and sent them to Europe for the museums there so that the Europeans would learn about our flora and fauna. The effect of this is that the Europeans were able to appreciate the biodiversity that we have here in the tropics. Rizal was also a freehand drawing artist. He drew hundreds of sketches. He drew portraits of people, drawings of animals, landscapes, children's book illustrations, comic strips, and even the cover of the Noli Mitanghire. Here are some samples of Rizal's sketches. In the middle is the portrait of Blumentritt. This was done by Rizal's hand. And on the right is the view of the city of Aden, the capital of Yemen in the Middle East. Rizal drew this while on a ship passing through the Red Sea. Rizal was also a sculptor. He made several statuettes 
or mini statues. When he was a little boy, he made a little clay statue of Napoleon. And later on in his life, Rizal made this sculpture on the picture. It's entitled Wild Boar. He made this when he was in the Pitan. He must have seen several wild boars around in his plantation. Here's another Rizal statue made in the Pitan. This one is entitled The Pitan Girl. She's actually cooking food using a clay stove. Here's another famous sculpture of Rizal. This is entitled A Mother's Revenge. Rizal made this when he was in the Pitan. There were lots of crocodiles around in the Talisay estate and one day a crocodile attacked a puppy and the mother dog came to the rescue and attacked the crocodile trying to save her young one. When Rizal was in Europe, he also made sculptures. Here are samples. On the left is the woman on a couch and on the right is the triumph of science over death. The model for both statues was said to be Gertrude Beckett, Rizal's girlfriend when he was in London. The triumph of science over death shows a woman stepping on a skull and she's also lifting up a torch. This symbolizes science winning over sickness that causes death. Rizal being a doctor would like to show in this sculpture that science had lots of breakthroughs and in his time many sicknesses were overcome because of medicine. Rizal was also a magician. He had really quick hands. He performed magic tricks in parties of Filipinos in Europe and he also showed a few magic tricks to a Filipino aide in his Fort Santiago prison. If you've seen the movie Jose Rizal starring Cesar Montano, take note of the scene when Rizal was in prison. The prison aide was played by a young John Hilario and Rizal was played by Cesar Montano. And in one scene, Rizal was able to show off his magician skills to the young man serving food to him in Fort Santiago. That part of the movie is not fiction because we know from testimonies of relatives and friends of Rizal that he indeed had quick hands and he did magic tricks in parties. When he was in Europe, after dinner, the Filipinos would ask Rizal to either recite some poems or do some magic tricks for their entertainment. Rizal was also an athlete. He excelled in many sports, not just in one sport. He's considered one of the best fencers among Filipinos in Europe. And we have here a picture of him fencing with Juan Luna. Rizal was also an expert in gymnastics and swimming. These are two sports that he taught his students in the Pitan. When Rizal was in Germany, he was also a member of a chess club. Maybe it's like a varsity team in their university. Rizal was also into mountain climbing. It was said that he climbed Mount Makiling and put up a flag on its highest peak. When he did that, he was actually racing up the peak against a Spanish friend. And he outran the Spaniard all the way up to peak 2. That's the highest point of Mount Makiling in Los Baños. Rizal was also a linguist. He was fluent in 22 languages and dialects. How many languages can you speak? I can only speak two, Tagalog and English. But Rizal can speak in Tagalog, Cebuano, Ilocano, Subanun, and Chavacano. These are the Filipino languages that he can speak. Meanwhile, the Asian languages that Rizal knows are Malay, Mandarin, Nipongo, Sanskrit, Hebrew, and Arabic. And the European languages that Rizal knows are Latin, Spanish, Portuguese, German, English, French, Italian, Dutch, Swedish, Russian, and Greek. If you count this, they total 22. Amazing! Rizal is also a songwriter. Some of his poems are actually songs like Himno al Trabajo, Himno Atalisay, and El Canto del Viajero. However, Rizal was not good in singing, but at least he can write songs. Rizal was also an interior designer. He was the one who decorated his nipa huts in the Pitan. He even wrote to his mother and sisters several suggestions on how to arrange and beautify the interior of their homes in Manila. He drew his suggestions on paper and we can see these drawings today. His suggestions included hanging plants. In their time, the use of hanging plants was not popular. He must have seen this in Europe and so he tried to introduce the idea here in the Philippines. Another of his suggestions is the displaying of dining plates in cabinets. Have you seen houses with dining plates 
inside wooden cabinets with glass doors we all know that dining plates are used for eating but in the houses of rich people there's a set of dining plates for eating and another set for display purposes only that is actually a Rizalian idea Rizal must have gotten his interior designing skills from his trips in Europe Rizal is also a great cook how do we know this because there are lots of clues all over his novels in chapter 1, he mentioned Tinola and its ingredients. He could just have concentrated on the story, but he purposely added extra sentences to explain how Tinola is cooked. He did the same in chapter 23 and chapter 24 when Ibarra, Maria Clara, and her friends had a picnic by the lake. Rizal gave detailed description of their food. You might see it unnecessary to describe the food in the picnic, but Rizal, being a culinary expert, just couldn't control himself from writing a few sentences to describe the food eaten in the picnic. In another instance, Tia Isabel also mentioned so many fish delicacies after the picnic and what kind of fish should be used for this kind and that kind of dish. So in his novel, Rizal was like showing off his culinary expertise. Rizal was also a politician. Although he never held a public office, like the office of a mayor or barangay captain, Rizal considered himself a politician. During his trial, he said, Since I was exiled in the Pitan, I have retired from politics. Before his exile, he was very active in putting up organizations, writing his political thoughts. But this all stopped when he was in the Pitan. The poems that he wrote and the letters also were very non-political. They just talked about about nature, about friends, about science, nothing about politics anymore. But at least one time in his life, or for most part of his life, Rizal was into politics. Lastly, Rizal can be said to be a prophet. What is a prophet? A prophet is somebody who makes prophecies. And actually, a handful of Rizal's prophecies came true. Number one, in his essay in La Solidaridad entitled The Philippines a Century Hence, Rizal mentioned in that essay that the Philippines will gain independence from Spain. Then America will steal away that independence from us. And it actually happened. Rizal wrote this in the 1880s when he was in Europe doing the La Solidaridad. Our independence from Spain was attained in 1898 or around 10 years after. And then if you know your history, we know that America came into the picture and became our new colonizer. How was Rizal able to see all this 10 years prior? Another Rizal prophecy is the crocodile fight involving Ibarra and Elias. This story is from No Limitangere. It is said that the crocodile fight involving Ibarra and Elias is the team up of the Filipino elite and the Filipino masses in revolting against Spain, the crocodile. At first, it was Elias representing the Filipino masses fighting the crocodile. And then Ibarra representing the Filipino elite joined the fight and actually turned out as the hero because had not Ibarra joined the fight, Elias couldn't get the job done. And this is what actually happened in the revolution. Emilio Aguinaldo and his friends, the Filipino elite, took over the revolution from Bonifacio and declared independence in 1898. Rizal was able to predict that the participation of the elite would be the turning point of the revolution. Rizal also wrote in one of his essays that if the Philippines would not actively work out for its independence, Japan would conquer us within the next 25 years. During that time, Japan was already an upcoming world power and Rizal could sense that Japan would invade parts of Asia and annex it to its empire and the Philippines would not be an exemption. Rizal estimated that the Japanese invasion would happen 25 years from his time. Well, Rizal was correct. The Japanese invasion really did happen but not in 25 years but in 50 years. Nonetheless, this Rizalian prophecy came true. Number four, in the No Limitang Hire, there's a line which says, I will die without seeing the dawn of freedom in this country. But those of you who will live to see it, do not forget us who befell in the darkness. These are words of Elias as he was dying. And true enough, the revolutionary side of Rizal that Elias represents 
had this experience. Rizal died before Independence Day, before seeing the dawn of freedom in 1898. Rizal died in 1896. And lastly, Rizal, when he was a little boy, prophesied that people would make statues of him in many places. And it did happen. Today, we can see lots of Rizal statues practically in every town in the archipelago. So would you say that Rizal was indeed a prophet? As a conclusion, we can indeed say that Rizal is the great Malayan because no other brown-skinned man had greater worldwide fame and accomplishments as him. Do you know any other Filipino or somebody in the Malayan countries of Southeast Asia that is more famous than Rizal and had greater accomplishments than him? Nobody. He is such a genius and a multi-talented man. So we call him the great Malayan. So there you have it. I hope you learned many new things today in this episode of the Rizal Lectures. This is Sir Jet saying goodbye and thank you.